Hi everyone, and welcome to the New Mexico Museum of Art's Smarter Smartphone Photography. I'm Chris Nail, your museum educator. We started this course last year in the tradition of the museum not only showing art, but supporting the people who make it. Our state has a rich history with the medium of photography that is reflected in our collection and our exhibitions. With the advent of the smartphone camera, people are making more photographs than ever before, and we'd like to help you make those fantastic memories look even better. Usually this course takes place over a few hours at the museum, but to make it available to people in their homes, we are breaking the class up into a series of short videos. We won't be focusing on any particular smartphone or piece of technology, and we'll instead look at general practices in photography that are applicable no matter what camera is in your hand. Today, let's talk about something that can help to improve a photograph that you have a strong personal connection to, context. Have you ever flipped through a family photo album or an Instagram feed and seen an image of a tree or car or some other object or location that seems sort of random? Maybe that tree was where your parents or grandparents got engaged, but would anybody else understand the importance of that tree without a little more information in the image? When making images, think about how a stranger would be able to understand it. Try to give that stranger the information or context within the image that will help them understand why it is important to you. Let's take an example of what not to do. I have a very specific memory associated with this image of a horse, but it's an all-around bad photograph. When you look at this image, does a feeling or story come to mind? Probably not. When I made this photograph, I was on a volunteer search for a missing person, and this horse decided to follow the team I was on, providing some much-needed levity in the middle of some serious business. But only the people who were there would understand that. This next photograph gets a lot more things right. When you look at it, you probably understand that it is an image of a young child visiting an aquarium. That child's sense of wonder at seeing a big, colorful fish swim by is the real topic of the image. All the information you need to get to that story is in the image. If you're wondering why the child's face is blurred, it's because this is my son and we try to keep him anonymous online. Thus, his face is blurred out. Some general things to keep in mind when making an image you intend to share, either online or on the refrigerator, are things like, what clues are you giving a viewer? Where could the image have been taken? This image probably doesn't go quite far enough. We see pine needles on the floor and it appears to be a lobby of some sort. Overall, this isn't quite enough information. This was taken in the museum lobby after we brought in a tree for our courtyard during the holidays. Other things you should consider. Who is there? What makes the image important to you? What story do you want to tell? Will you need more than one image to do all of that? Here we see our collections manager, Erica, working with a group of high school students in our collection storage area. Someone who isn't familiar with how museums store large paintings could still understand that this is some sort of art storage area, and Erica's body language helps us to understand the relationship between her and the students, which helps a viewer to understand the general story of what's going on here, even if it isn't specific to the New Mexico Museum of Art. Keeping those small things in mind will help to improve your photographs, no matter what camera you have in your hand. In our next installment, we'll talk about how to arrange all of these things in your frame. Keep up with everything that is going on at the museum by following us on Facebook, Instagram, or by checking our website. Until then, go make smart.